and welcome to TA Academy. In today's lecture, we'll learn how to find out the gain of a feedback control system. So given a block diagram like this, we want to find out the closed loop transfer function of this system. So at the input, we have a reference signal R of S. The output is C of S which is the controlled output signal then in between the input and the output we have a block G of S which is the forward transfer function of the system so this is forward transfer function then there is a feedback signal B of S which gets subtracted from the reference signal R of S and gives an error signal E of S so in this feedback path there is another transfer function H of S which is known as the feedback feedback transfer function We have already looked in detail at transfer functions in my lecture series on signals and systems. If you want some more background on transfer functions, then you can go ahead and watch my lectures. So in today's lecture, we'll be learning how to find out the closed loop transfer function. So in this system, we have an open loop transfer function. Open loop transfer function which is given as g of s times h of s and a closed loop transfer function which is given by the ratio c of s over r of s so the controlled output signal over the input reference signal would give us the closed loop transfer function. So in today's lecture we will learn that given a feedback control system like this which has a certain forward transfer function G of S and a certain feedback transfer function H of S, how can we find out the closed loop transfer function? Well for that we have to express C of S in terms of R of S which we can do simply by analyzing this block diagram. So if I look at the forward gain block G of S then I can write the controlled output signal in terms of the error signal. So this would be the first step that the controlled signal C of S is equal to the forward transfer function times the error signal E of S. So this is, let's call it equation number one. Then similarly for the feedback path, I can write that the feedback signal B of S is equal to the control signal C of S times the feedback transfer function which is H of S. And now this error signal can be written in terms of the reference signal and the feedback signal. So this will be the third step. Here as you can see the feedback signal B of S gets subtracted from the reference signal so R of S minus B of S is equal to E of S. Now here I will substitute the value of B of S from 2 to 3 to get the expression R of S minus C of S times H of S is equal to E of S. Let's call it equation number 
4. So let's write these equations again. So the equation number 1 I had was C of S is equal to G of S times E of S. This was equation number 1. And equation number 4 which I derived was R of S minus C of S times H of S is equal to E of S. So this was equation number 4 and from here I can eliminate E of S by substituting the value of E of S from 4 to 1 and this will give me the expression C of S is equal to G of S times this whole expression R of S minus C of S times H of S. Now multiplying G of S inside will get R of S times G of S minus C of S G of S times H of S. Now C of S I can take to the other side because I want the final expression in terms of C of S and R of S. So C of S when I take on the other side I can take it common this will give me 1 plus G of S H of S is equal to R of S times G of S. And what is the closed loop transfer function that I want? It is C of S over R of S. So just dividing R of S on the left hand side dividing by R of S on both sides I will get C of S over R of S is equal to G of S divided by 1 plus G of S H of S so this is the closed loop transfer function of a feedback control system so let's look at it in some detail. So this was the input reference signal R of S. Here is the takeoff point for the controlled output signal. Then we have a feedback path. Here is the feedback signal B of S and the subtraction of D2 gives the error signal E of S. So this expression is saying here that the closed loop transfer function is equal to the forward transfer function which is right here g of s divided by 1 plus the open loop transfer function. So g of s times h of s as we just saw is the open loop transfer function. So knowing these two, we can find out the closed loop transfer function of a system. So now we'll be solving a problem where we are given a certain feedback control system and we are interested in finding out the closed loop transfer function. So we will utilize this expression, let's call it number five, to find out the closed loop transfer function. So this is the example that we have, we have an input signal R of S, then we have a cascade system here. So let's call the first block G1 of S and the second block G2 of S. Then we have the output signal C of S and this is the feedback transfer function H of S from previous block diagram. Another thing worth mentioning is that 
1 plus g of s h of s comes when the feedback signal is subtracted from the reference signal. If it is added with the reference signal then this sign becomes negative. So in this example let's assume that the feedback signal b of s is added to the reference signal in order to give this error signal e of s. In most situations we will encounter negative feedback. You might already have seen some videos on feedback control that I have on my channel. But just for demonstration and for the purpose of analyzing this problem, let's assume that the feedback signal is added to the reference signal. So we'll just follow the steps and find out the forward transfer function g of s which in this case will be a multiplication of the gains in the forward path. So this would be g1 of s times g2 of s and substituting the values s over, ah, excuse me this is not s but rather 3. This is 3 here. So g1 of s would be 3 over s times s plus 1 and g2 of s is s square over 3 times s plus 2. So multiplying these two gains I will get the forward gain as s divided by these 3 will cancel so s divided by s times s plus 1 times s plus 2. So this right here is the forward gain. Next I'm interested in finding out the denominator which is r of s. This is by the way is also known as the characteristic equation 1 plus g of s h of s or 1 minus g of s h of s. In this case since we have positive feedback so let's find out the characteristic equation which is 1 minus g of s times h of s this will come out as 1 minus so g of s we just found out here it is s over s plus 1 times s plus 2 times h of s which is 6 divided by s this s will cancel and we'll have the final output as 1 minus 6 divided by s times s plus 1 times s plus 2. Now we have g of s and 1 minus g of s h of s so we can find out the closed loop transfer function which is given by c of s divided by r of s which is nothing but g of s divided by 1 minus g of s times h of s now substituting the values of g of s and h of s so g of s is s over s ah, so this s cancelled so we only have s over s plus 1 divided by s plus 2 and similarly here there is no s here so s divided by s plus 1 times s plus 2 divided by 1 minus 6 over s plus 1 times s plus 2. So simplifying this expression we'll have s over s plus 1 times s plus 2 divided by s plus 1 times s plus 2 minus 6 divided by s plus 1 times 
s plus 2 so these right here will cancel and we'll get the expression s divided by s plus 1 times s plus 2 minus 6 and the denominator can be simplified further to give us s square plus 3s plus 2 minus 6 and the final expression will then become s square plus 3s minus 4 so this right here is the closed loop transfer function of this feedback control system so we'll work a lot with open loop transfer functions and closed loop transfer functions when we'll start with frequency domain analysis so in today's lecture i just wanted to give you a brief overview of how you can analyze a given feedback control system and find out the closed loop transfer function just by knowing the forward transfer function and the feedback transfer function so that's it for today's lecture i hope it was useful i'll see you again in another lecture stay tuned to my channel bye